So I think we can all agree that the end game in Diablo 4 right now is to farm the Ubers. We've gone ahead and reached level 100 with the, I'm going to say Season 1 build, pretty much, right? And we've replicated that build in Season 2 with the Vampiric Powers. But now, as we are at the end game, about to max out our glyphs, we're doing Tier 100 dungeons, or about to, uh, what is there to do? It is to farm the Ubers to try and get those very rare uniques. Also, there is a couple of the new uniques that are very interesting, and I had not, not really done that until now. So I now have about 30 or so Duriel runs, and I was fortunate enough to get some of the uh, new uniques, obviously, which are fairly easy, but also one of the very rare ones. So I thought it was going to be a lot harder to do that. Uh, we're barely two weeks into the season, and I have one of the two that I was really hoping to get, and I need just one more. So because of that, I want to update the build to uh, the new end game that I think is going to include those uniques. Some of you guys might say, well, that's too hard to obtain. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I mean, it is a numbers game. You're eventually going to get them if you play enough and if you keep farming the mats and doing Duriel. Uh, what I would say or recommend is that you find a team of three other players that have keys as well, and then you split it four ways. Therefore, you can get more for uh, more for your time, right? So I've been doing exactly that, and uh, I got some huge upgrades. And it is going to change the build in a way that we're going to be dropping some stats. We're going to be focusing on some other ones. We can even switch up our skills. So I want to share that with you guys right now before you commit to uh, your other gear. Now, you might say that you're never going to reach that point. So you want to focus on the other build, which is fine. But for a player like myself, uh, now that I'm only doing this or pretty much only going to be doing this moving forward uh, to perfect the build, I want to make sure that I account for that so that I save my precious mats and I don't waste my time. You'll see that with this setup, uh, we're basically powering through dungeons right now. I'm not even at tier 100, but um, we're, we're surviving just fine. We have a ton more HP. We have even more damage. Uh, it's basically super easy at this point and it's going to get even better. So anyway, all that said, let's go check out the updated build. All right, so let's go over the stats and the gear for this modified version or the uber version of the Poison Blades in Season 2 with the changes that I would like to do, but the ones that I currently have or that I'm currently testing, all right? So our helm would eventually become the Shaco um, for obvious reasons, right? A lot of great stats on it. Uh, we would therefore lose some total armor, so we would have to compensate for that with having the armor on our amulet like we originally planned. And then as we get better pieces here uh, for extra armor on our, let's say, their chest piece, the pants, and the gloves, we should be pretty close to our cap. We're also going to get plus four to all skills, which is kind of crazy, uh, along with all stats and all the other good things. We're going to get damage reduction, but we're not going to um, drop might we're just going to move might to our chest piece i think that might will be a little bit better than the cheats um so once we get that piece we'll slot that in and make those changes the chest piece will probably stay as is we can squeeze out even more damage percent uh because we got a low roll here but um it's working out fine for now so i think i'm just going to keep rocking this then the gloves so the gloves obviously um i'm not quite sure what i want to do with them yet Definitely, we need Twisted Blades, we need Lucky Hit Chance, and now that we're going to be using a new weapon, we probably need to bring attack speed back, which means we may need to drop our crit chance instead, and I'm undecided between the uh, chance to heal on Lucky Hit or a primary resource on Lucky Hit. Both of them have their use, uh, so as I tweak the gear a little bit more, I will eventually determine which one I prefer and put it in the planner. As for the pants, um, they would probably stay almost as is. We could get more damage reduction, obviously, because we got a low roll. The dodge chance could remain dodge chance um, because we are now using uh, increased damage after dodge, which is why we're getting such a high amount of uh, attack power when we do. But we can get even more if we roll the attack damage after dodge on the pants. So we may drop the dodge and instead go for that stat. But so far, we've been kind of like absolutely melting everything, so it might not even be needed. Penitent Greaves will remain best in slot. My crossbow still has not been upgraded 
uh, to the right stats. I do have this one right here that I'm trying to roll, but it's now up to 10 million a roll uh, to remove the damage over time to get my decks, and I still can't get it. So uh, who knows? I may eventually uh, switch it up completely and just start with a new piece. The amulet remains the same, uh, still corruption. Then the damage reduction here or the damage percent will have to be dropped for the armor percent roll. So I'm um, also not sure what I'm going to do if I'm going to keep the damage reduction or the damage. Both of them have a use, obviously, but um, I'm trying to be as strong as possible. So I may try it without the damage reduction for a while. Then we have uh, this ring, which has not changed since the last build. Lucky hit, crit chance and damage to close and maximum life. Although maximum life at this point is starting to not be as important on a ring if we're going to keep using the weapon uh, that we're going to cover in a second. Then we got this ring. So this is one of the new pieces. Uh, seems good on paper. Uh, lucky hit is great damage over time fine cooldown reduction always good and then we have your damage over time effects have a 50 percent chance to erupt dealing uh 36 000 damage or so i can't really notice it that much especially that i'm still running shadow imbuement so uh test would be to probably drop shadow imbuement and instead run just this ring uh and the Doombringer. So that is one of the uber uniques that is completely changing up the build uh, for obvious reasons. We're getting a massive amount of increased damage uh, with the damage percent. Core skill is not that useful or doesn't really do anything for the poison imbuement, but will, for example, still impact the shadow imbuement, if I understand correctly. And then we're getting a massive amount of extra life, which is huge. So we're now sitting at 20k life. Like this is almost too much. So I'm thinking we're going to drop the rubies on the gear and go for the topaz, which will give us damage reduction when we're crowd control, which is usually what kills you anyway. So um, it would make sense to, to do that switch. So I'll put that in the planner for you guys. And then we have the chance to heal on lucky hit. So between this, the gloves, and one of our skills, we have so much heal on hit that we're basically always full health, which is, which is great. Uh, but the question is, can we start dropping, for example, the skill points in our skills or drop the chance to heal on our gloves and instead only rely on this? Not sure yet. I'm going to say it's probably not enough by itself, even with a large health pool. Uh, then we have the lucky hit a chance to deal shadow damage to surrounding enemies and reduce their damage by 20%. This is huge. It's, it's a must. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And now that we can farm the uber uniques uh, and the fact that I got them fairly quickly or got one of them fairly quickly, then I'm just going to try and work with this or aim for this now from now on for every uh, for every build. Our other dagger has not changed. We are still using pestle and point. Uh, you will notice though that we did have to drop something to use the x Fals corroded signet, which we dropped shared misery. We're instead now putting the bursting venoms on our gloves and uh, now we're using this ring. Um, if you would want to keep using the Asheris Conjar, I don't think it would work. So this is kind of like the upgrade to Ashira's Conjar in my opinion, but because we're using the sword, we're now uh, lacking a little bit for the attack speed, but we've made a few adjustments here and there to compensate for that. For example, um, we have as much movement or mobility as we can to get the best out of this one right here. So we're now sitting at almost 63% increased attack speed. Uh, and I, I swapped a piece, so I need to uh, fix these. But overall, it does work. We're, we're on 20 total packs, which means it can work with this exact setup. So we've dropped the previous um, Vampiric Power, and now we're instead we're using Hectic. It does work great. You can actually reduce your cooldowns while just attacking. You don't need to hit mobs. So uh, it only seems logical to slot this one in to try and maximize our uptime of poison imbuement, especially when we don't get our proc. Therefore, I'm going to keep rocking uh, exactly these vampiric powers for uh, the time being. So back to attack speed. Now that we have a little bit less because we don't have a Shira's Conjar. So um, we have our attack speed here. We went with the attack speed on the gloves. We have some attack speed in this part as well on the Lerana's board. So we're getting another 7.5%. And I went back to putting a couple of points into haste to uh, hit what I think is still the maximum, which is 100%, right? So we can still hit our cap of attack speed without using a potion. 
and uh, the way we're doing this is by trying to get even more movement speed. So right now we are getting a little bit of extra movement speed when it triggers on our chest piece with the uh, cheats. So we may eventually not have this, but you can still hit the cap without this piece. All right, now let's quickly go over the skills and the changes that I've done so far or that that I'm trying. So I'm, I'm not um, entirely sure this will be the the final version of the skill. So keep checking the planner for the updates. So you'll notice that I dropped three points into siphoning strikes because we're now using Doombringer and we have the heal on our gloves that we're currently testing. We'll see if that's enough. Now, if we drop this, what's interesting is that, um, you know, crit rate becomes less and less important because obviously we're not critting with our poison imbuements. Uh, we're kind of like using it for the heals here. So dropping crit rate entirely is kind of huge for our build it's it frees up a lot of slots that we could do other things with uh this here has not really changed uh we are still using dark shroud but instead now that i'm, I'm not using this i moved a point in uh, into subverting dark shroud for increased movement speed to again give us more um attack speed in the end because of the vampiric power right so uh we're, we're hitting the cap easily with this setup then we have the same concept here. Nothing has changed. Uh, we're still using Poison Imbuement with uh, the Blended Poison Imbuement. Although now that we're dropping crit rate, uh, same thing applies here. We may not need the Blended Poison Imbuement anymore. And instead, we may uh, just work with the Mixed Poison Imbuement since we have a chance to deal double the amount. So it is a little bit more damage, but it's on a lucky hit. But because we're stacking so much lucky hit, uh, it feels like you know it's going to happen quite often. We've removed the points into precision imbuement for the time being, again, because we're, we're slowly kind of trying to drop our crit rate. Uh, and then we put three points into Alchemist's Fortune instead, and uh, the extra points that I mentioned before into Haste, and we're still using our close quarters combat. All right, for the Paragon points, nothing has changed since the last one, but I'll still quickly go over some of the important points here and kind of talk about how I usually build it from the ground up because i've had that question a couple of times just kind of go for the main rare nodes first and then it really just depends on your stats i think that's kind of the the thing that i check is to see if my stats i have enough of them to hit the extra bonus of the next board if i don't then maybe i spend a little bit more points getting some of the extra rare nodes in that one um so it really just depends on the gear and your drops basically so as you are progressing in here, uh, obviously go for the glyphs as quickly as possible or the legendary nodes, right? And uh, if you see that you're not ready for the next board, then just keep going for the other rare nodes and put a little extra points to, let's say, cap one of the glyphs if you can, especially if you pulled the right glyph early on and you started leveling it. As for the order of the boards, starter board, then we go into cheap shot. I go into Leirana's instinct. Then we go up into the tricks of the trade. The following one is no witnesses. And then uh, we go down into Eldritch Bounty. So that's the first six. And then the seventh, uh, we finish with Bane up here on the right hand side. I'm still not finished leveling all the glyphs. I'm getting pretty close. I think I have two more to max out. Uh, but otherwise, this is the exact setup and I'm gonna keep rocking this for the time being. All right, back to the vampiric powers real quick. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not optimized right now, so I need to shuffle points around, but I didn't wanna spend too much time doing that because these gloves are not permanent. Uh, and that's a reason why it's currently not working. So I am missing a huge amount of damage from increased damage over time, uh, which I didn't have at the time of, of showing the Uber runs, right? So I just did this swap and tr tried a couple nightmare dungeons to see how well it would go but once everything is kind of uh in place i think we're going to be using exactly this so hectic for the reduce of the cooldown that's huge on basic attacks we have a lot of attack speed which means it triggers all the time and when you you're doing the uber runs like i explained in the beginning uh between those waves you can just reset your cooldowns which is fantastic right uh then we have the prey on the weak ravenous a cursed touch and flowing veins which will get the benefit eventually um one more thing i'll say before i let you guys go is back to the skills obviously now that we have more aoe from our items um we may be able to drop shadow imbuement entirely which frees up an entire slot on our skills so um i'm not sure which one i i want to go with for the time being i do like shadow imbuement we've been using it since the beginning we do get extra damage 
uh, to to targets when they're shadow imbued for by 12%, which is kind of huge. And it's for eight seconds. And now that we can reduce our cooldowns, you can basically always have this up. So if you're farming or, or doing nightmare dungeons, whatever, AoE is always better. But when you're going to be doing bosses, for example, Uber Lilith, sure, you know, Poison Trap might be better in that case. It might work better with the new uh, item X Fowls, the ring, but it might not be needed as, you know, you're, you're never kind of standing in place. But um, maybe what we could do instead for Uber Lilith is, let's say, drop the one of our mobility skills and go for uh, Poison and poison trap right and go for either this one for the extra damage or that one to reset the cooldown of our poison imbuement to hopefully have you know even more uptime or to guarantee our runs when we're doing uber lilith another option would be to run smoke grenade because we do get a nice plus 25 percent increased damage when we um when we use it or for the mobs that are dazed uh, obviously it doesn't daze bosses but um, when they are cc'd then this uh, should come into play right so we can squeeze out more damage we can play around with the uh, fourth skill uh, on our bar but uh, overall that's the setup guys do let me know what you think in the comment section below um, and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one